Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Rob here. Today I'm going to talk about stabilizers for video, specifically camcorders, things like monopods, tripods, cheap ones, expensive ones. The ones in the middle seem to work best for me. But uh, that's, that's going to be the conversation of this uh, topic today. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, kind of let's uh, get right into it. As we're talking, I want to remind you that all of this is not sponsored. I don't owe anybody an explanation for why we're doing it. These are my own opinions, and I hope that you find them helpful. If you do, please feel free to use the Amazon links down below or send me a cup of coffee through PayPal. That'd be great. Okay, so this was actually a question I got on my HCX 1500-2000 CX-10 video for this little camcorder right here. And the reality is, if you're using a camcorder or any kind of camera, you want some kind of stabilization most of the time. The number one thing that can ruin footage, unless it's very stylized footage, is handheld shaky footage. And even the best in-body image stabilization and warp stabilizer can't always give you the most rock-solid, groundbreaking footage that you want. And if you're going for a cinematic look, a couple ways to achieve that are through a large sensor, giving you that nice creamy background, although that's something relatively new kind of uh, in the last 10 years or so. Uh, most films and videos uh, that you'll see in the cinema and stuff like that use the blurry background look very, very seldom, unless they're trying to put emphasis on something like racking focus, things like that. It's great for things like wedding videos, something that I do, but also the full in-focus look of a smaller sensor or a smaller aperture will also make your uh, image and your creation look more professional when it's stabilized. So another way to get that really great look is to just simply stabilize the footage. I like to do it with tripods. And let's start off with the conversation there about tripods. Uh, most of you are probably pretty familiar with tripods, specifically when it comes to something like uh, just putting a camera on a cheap $20 Sunpack tripod or even a $200 Manfrotto. Uh, this kind of price range and things where most people begin. And I would say that in that you're, you're really getting nothing more than an extra invisible hand to hold a camera. Now, when you want a tripod, you, what you're really looking for, depending on what you're doing, but the number one thing it's trying to do is stabilize your footage, right? So cheaper plastic tripods might be great for a very lightweight camera. Uh, they might be good for a, a run and gun kind of setup where you're just going to go out and shoot, but often won't stand up to things like wind and other environmental factors. Uh, they also don't generally stand up to things like that when you put a heavier camera or payload on them, and that's something that you got to think about. When we want to talk about that tripod, I'm always looking for something that's going to give me a little bit more uh, maneuverability and deployability. And that means that I generally look for my, for my photo cameras, I generally look for something like uh, with a ball head like we see right here. Uh, I also look for something that has the ability to uh, telescope up or down, also has the ability to turn into a monopod like this Zoomy brand right here can this leg can come off and the head can come off and you can turn it into a monopod. There are some quick -wing tripods that work really well for that. Uh, but more importantly is it's relatively simple, especially for photos and uh, cameras like that, even to hold a, a second camera for video. It's got aluminum legs, they telescope out three sections, and then it even has nice rubber grommets on the feet or metal protectors that actually spike into the ground. The ball head, gives it some ability to lock down and be stable. And then uh, basically an Arca Swiss styled uh, quick plate. Uh, most cages that you'll find will have a plate like that so that you can slide it straight on and lock it down if you need to do so. I'm not so worried about the bull's level, but if it's got one, that's great. The ability to have a clutch that adds drag in case you did need to use this for some kind of video function is important. Although uh, it would be very hard to do a good solid pan with this particular head. More importantly though, a good solid drag so that you can get portrait as well as landscape orientation photos is important. And having a nice uh, clutch will do that for you. There's another way to do it and that's kind of like what we've got over here. In this, in this one that we see right here for the larger camera, I actually have a LaFon tripod. This is an aluminum tripod, three sections. Each section, except for the last section, has two different legs that allow it to telescope out one and two. So it's kind of like made up of telescoping arms. They lock in place with clamps, which makes for deployability pretty easy. 
the bottom have feet that actually come off to reveal spikes uh, that will stick into the dirt pretty easily or the sand. And the feet are large and rectangular. They're two by, I think, four pad that has rubberized grip on the bottom of them. It's really nice because you can use it indoor or outdoor very quickly. Deployability is simple. It uses a ball and washer type of uh, hip joint mount right here, which means that when you want to, I'm gonna step out of the camera so that you can't see me, but when you want to adjust it, you can very easily adjust it like that. I believe this one is 67 millimeters. You can get them higher. Uh, up to the top, you actually have a nice proper, uh, this is a not a fluid head, although it mimics a fluid head design so that you can get a good pan going on over there. And it's fully adjustable and customizable with a quick release plate. Something like that weighs a little bit more, but it has a payload up to something like 15 pounds and it can extend over seven feet, which is really nice. I like it for that reason. The adjustable um, hip jointed ball head that it's got over there is really nice because it allows you to get all of your level from point A to point B in a pan set up prior to the shot. And if you've got the time to do that, then all that means is setting it up, going to one position, your furthest pan position right, setting for level, going to your furthest pan position left, again setting for level, adjusting, and then transiting and making sure that you're level all the way across. Uh, when you level across those different ways, you'll come up with an average medium, which will give you your most level pan shot across. No matter what we're doing when we're trying to stabilize with these tripods, we are doing the same function, whether it's for photo or for video. Uh, each one will have different heads that attach to the tripod that allow you to do what it is you'd like to do better, such as a ball head for photography and a pan head uh, for videography. But either one could be used interchangeably. And you can buy them that way as well. So when you're out there, make sure you're looking for something that's going to be able to support the payload that you want. I would suggest twice the payload that you expect because if you've got a camera on top of a, a tripod on a windy day, well, it will get blown around. Don't forget to accommodate for any gear that you want the tripod to carry as well, gear that might be attached onto the camera, such as a, well, a, a viewfinder <laughs> or an LCD monitor. Um, and then uh, think about how you're going to use it and employ it. If you're going to have to pack this thing around, you may want to choose a material like carbon fiber. I've got a Care uh, 34L Bravo, which is very similar to this one right here, but it's in carbon fiber. They're in the $150 range. They're not too expensive. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon. You can, you can get them up to 200 bucks, but you can find a sale for them usually for around 150 Same thing with the Lafon. Uh, they've been really great uh, tripods. I've enjoyed them quite a bit. Something else that we want to talk about with specifically moving away from videography and moving towards photography, or let me say that again, moving away from photography and moving towards videography, is we want to stabilize using something like a gimbal, our camera, so that we can record. Now, this is a really interesting subject. By adding the gimbal, you're adding complexity to your setup. Uh, but you're not necessarily making your footage any better. Walking with a gimbal, using a gimbal, uh, requires technique and training. And you just have to get out there and practice. Hey, experience is free. Wisdom's learned over time by doing, so get out there and do. But there are a couple of things you're going to want. Whereas a tripod, you can set a camera on it and most of the time not have to, to worry too much about it. A gimbal will require something that holds it <laughs> all the time. Now, if you don't have feet for the gimbal, then that's going to be you. You're not putting it down. Having feet on the gimbal will allow you to put it down and walk away from it when you've got your camera on it, and it'll be pretty, pretty stable. Not completely. It's always a kind of moment. But you want to make sure that you get a gimbal that's able to actually um, hold the weight, support the weight of what it is you're going to be putting on it. And in this case, I've got a quick release plate attached to this gimbal so that I can very easily set my camera on it and go. Uh, this gimbal, as you can see, when it's off, is free moving. It has no locks. This gimbal, as you can see, when it's off, is not free moving. It has locks. You want the locks, trust me. We're going to talk about this gimbal right here in a second and the monopod that goes along with it. But often, I will use this gimbal 
and this additional handle attachment, or a different one, with my A6500 in battery pack right here, actually over there. And when I'm walking around and shooting and, and moving and things like that indoors, I'll usually have it on this one because I can set it down on a table and stuff like that. When I go outside, I'll change these feet out for this monopod. I don't need a pan or tilt head because we'll take care of that. But I do have feet that allow the motion of the monopod to rock forwards, backwards, and side to side. That's very important. Now, some gimbals that you're going to get will come in packages that come with a set of feet and some won't. So just pay attention. Gimbals have gotten ridiculously inexpensive lately. There's a lot of competition for there for that reason. Here we have a monopod, maybe it was 50 bucks. It did come with a pan head and, um, and it did come with the feet. And it's a three section monopod, it'll go up to 62 inches. But it's not really great. It's not the best, it works, right? Uh, what makes it not so great is that we have clasps that are not adjustable. And the Lafon, the Care, Right here, uh, we've got adjustable tension clasps. Just use your Allen key, you're good to go. And that means that as they begin to loosen, you can tighten them so they maintain the weight at the extension you want. Not so here. In fact, when I put this gimbal and camera on this uh, <laughs> here, it will actually press it down. Uh, also is that the <clears throat> material may be aluminum, but it's in a square or box formation rather than a circle. Well, a cylinder, really. And what that does is it gives it flex. You have the ability when this has weight on this end and you are standing on the bottom end there, it has the ability to flex. That's because you can, well, a, a cylinder is a more structurally strong shape and resistant to flex than is a square, okay? Uh, it's also a harder shape to produce in perfection, which keeps costs down. So when you have the ability to get a tripod that isn't a specifically custom-made tripod to have a different shaped leg, a tripod or monopod that has a cylindrical tube rather than a square tube will be helpful. It's just a manufacturing process that is important. Um, part of the structure of this is being made up for in the thickness of the aluminum rather than the structure itself. Something to keep your mind on. So I use this usually with this tripod or this gimbal. I'll put it on there with the A6500 because it can support that weight much. Uh, gimbal and the uh, A6500, you're coming in about six pounds, maybe seven, no problem for the HCX 1500 with the handle, which is really the 2000 configuration. You're five pounds, you're at seven pounds or six pounds on the gimbals, you're around 11 pounds, plus all the attachments that I put on it, as you can see. Well, you can't even see all of them because they're not up there, but there's more that go on there. Um, you, with almost a 14 pound setup, not the camera as at 14 pound, but the camera and the gimbal. So it's harder for this to work well with it. So, Let's talk about feet and talk about this monopod real quick. You can see me do this in real time. Okay. We've got the monopod up here. Carbon fiber, real nice. And then we can adjust, boom, by taking the monopod off right there. Now this is an instance where I believe I'm going to add a quick release plate, because it will, without question, make that setup much, much easier to transition into. Okay. But as you can see, in real time, this setup isn't too difficult to get a hold of and move. Now I wanna take a minute while we're here just to talk about the HCX 1500, 2000, or CX10, just depending on what model you want. The networking features and the live streaming features are, are really the difference between them. This is an excellent camera. Small sensor, one over 2.5. Um, it's got excellent image stabilization built into it. So why would I use it on a gimbal? 
Well, it's for the same reason as I talked about earlier. The image stabilization may be great, but it's not 100%. If you want your footage to look more cinematic, the more stable it is, the more cinematic, the more uh, high production value the feel will be for your viewer. In fact, unless you're doing a highly stylized piece like a point of view or uh, reality TV or news or some kind of Blair Witch style, make you feel you're there, you don't really want the camera movements to be noticed by the viewers. You want the camera to be an invisible window. You don't feel the movement of the camera, you feel the movement of the cinema. You feel the movement of the show. So that's something to keep in mind. Moving that over here, let's talk about what makes this nice, okay? And whenever you get your setup the way you want it, uh, you will have additional things to put on it. So I'm taking them off now. Now this one will go up to seven feet. It's got three interlocking adjustable clamps and it's got legs here or feet that spider out and close down. The other uh, gimbal does it or monopod does as well. And these are nice because these are extra long. Most of the time, they're about five inches or six inches long. These are almost eight inches long. With the base, we get a span of about 24 inches, 25 inches, uh, which is um, almost two feet. Maybe it's a little bit less than that. Okay. So we're actually probably a little bit less. Yeah, I overstated there. Maybe more like a foot and a half or a foot all the way across. But it also has a rubberized grommet right there, and the feet can go into different positions in order to do different maneuvers. Get you a little bit of extra height if you need it for that stability. Or lay flat. This will be very important. Now this base right here locks down like this with a very nice um, knurled grommet that goes down here, or knurled collar. Uh, not just friction fit, but screws down. The screws that allow this to work, the threads are very thick, right? Which means it's gonna have a lot of use. It's very good. And it also has, gives you the ability to go almost all the way to the ground, which is great. So you can have your stability, you can lock this down wherever you might need it to be, right? And then you can do different kinds of shots with your gimbal attached that will allow it to have that cinematic dolly, crane, push in, whatever kind of movement, you can mimic those here. Now some of these do take a team to work with in order to do that, but this is something that you're looking for in a foot for your monopod. Also, because it's longer, right, because the monopod feet are um, a little bit longer, then you will also have the ability to lock down this nut right here, and then when it's not extended too much, you can actually allow that rig to stand up on this. Now, I wouldn't walk away from it for too far, but if you have to put your hands down and put this down in order to get onto something, you'll be able to. It'll work. Finally, you're gonna look for something in the actual attachment part over here by this collet, all right? Which will allow you to switch out from quarter 20 to 3 8 this will allow you to match and meet so many more different use cases so that you can actually attach to different systems. So if you're attaching to a head or a gimbal for some reason that doesn't accept a 3 8 inch adapter or monopod or adapter plate, then a monopod like this with that kind of attachment will be helpful. And the reason some gimbals or some attachments won't have the larger thread is because it's a user error avoidance system that keeps you from putting too heavy or too big of an accessory on top of it that the monopod system or whatever system you're using wasn't rated to support. It just helps you keep you from doing something stupid. There's been a lot of talk about stabilization and everything else. I've kind of just given you this as a very conversational piece today, just, just a little chit chat with, with one another over coffee, so to speak. I do hope that you found it helpful. I'm sure there's several things that I've missed or haven't gone over, uh, mainly 
because I do these as stream of consciousness. So if you guys have any thoughts or have anything you'd like to talk about, please do so down in the comments below. That's going to wrap it up for me today. I hope this video is helpful for you. I'm Rob. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye for now.